the old ones were, the old ones are, and the old ones shall be. Not in the spaces we know, but between them. They walk serene and primal, undimensioned and unseen. Yogg-Sothoth knows the gate. Yogg-Sothoth is the gate. Yogg-Sothoth is the key and guardian of the gate. Past, present and future, all are one in Yogg-Sothoth. Hello everybody, and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo Out of Time. I'm Krabby Terror 8 and this video is a short primer on the Dunwich Horror for those who are embarking on the Dunwich Legacy campaign for Arkham Horror the Card Game. I'm doing this video because a number of you who are listening to the Flavor Text podcast have asked for the lore and background to that campaign. So this short video will hopefully do just that by covering the historical background to the story of the Dunwich Horror, a brief summary of the story and key plot points and characters, a brief analysis of the story, its themes and ideas, and how the Dunwich Horror interfaces with the Dunwich Legacy in terms of gameplay and narrative. So hopefully by the end of this video you'll be ready to tackle the Dunwich Legacy fully informed. Now, spoilers, if you want to play the Dunwich Legacy completely blind without any lore or story expectations then I would wait until you've played the campaign first. So let's dive in shall we and talk about The Dunwich Horror by H.P. Lovecraft. Now according to Wikipedia The Dunwich Horror is a novella by H.P. Lovecraft written in 1928 and first published in the April 1929 issue of Weird Tales. Written later in Lovecraft's life, when he was at his most productive and his writing at its apex, the Dunwich Horror represents Lovecraft's style, his preoccupations, ideas and themes in a nutshell. It's an ideal first Lovecraft novel precisely for these reasons, and readers at the time also liked this novella. It proved very popular, a Lovecraft was well paid, for his efforts. The novel itself is written in the signature Lovecraft style. An omniscient narrator relates the story in a passive and pseudo-objective manner with references to newspapers, literature and general scientific methodologies. Intercut with the narration is dialogue, often written in a style to evoke a backwoods New England accent from the characters themselves. The style is more tell rather than show, which along with the narration, tends to paradoxically undercut the tension and horror. Nevertheless, there is much to be found here, and a great source material for the first campaign in Arkham Horror, the card game. So what is the story of the Dunwich Horror? Well, let's have a look, shall we, in part two, Story Summary. When a traveller in north and central Massachusetts takes the wrong fork at the junction of the Aylesbury Pike, just beyond Dean's Corners, he comes upon a lonely and curious country. So begins the Dunwich Horror, and the first few chapters of the book are devoted to descriptions of the township and its decay and isolation. Rotting houses sit dully amid, amid a blasted rural backdrop, and the townsfolk are described as being in various states of poverty, degeneracy and decay. It is in this context that Wilbur Watley is born and strange events surround his birth and precocious development. Wilbur matures at an abnormal rate and dogs in particular fear him. He sports a goat-like visage and a strange unnatural inhuman odour. Wilbur's interest in his grandfather's strange books are muttered about and a presence in the farmhouse is alluded to along with the purchase of cattle which never seem to materialise anywhere. Wilbur, with his copy of the John Dee translation of the Necronomicon, travels to Miskatonic University in Arkham to seek out the Latin translation called the Oleus Wormius translation. The Necronomicon is the iconic cursed tome within the Lovecraft universe, which is apparently so full of evil and blasphemies that reading by an unwary reader may cause significant psychic and psychological damage. The further the translations are from the original, the less potent and limited their use it would seem, and hence the reason Wilbur needs the Latin version. The librarian, Dr. Henry Armitage, allows Wilbur to view the book, but absolutely refuses to release the university's copy to him. Wilbur then attempts to steal the copy that night, but a trusty guard dog attacks and kills him. 
and when Dr. Armitage, Professor Warren Rice and Professor Francis Morgan arrive, they stumble upon a hellishly disfigured corpse which melts away to nothing in a matter of minutes. That represents an ending of sorts, but violent happenings in Dunwich lead our brand of trusty professors to travel to the town and face down an invisible and mysterious creature. The professors have researched enough to have the use of a magic powder, which renders the monster visible long enough to enact spells which kill the creature. Screaming for Yogg-Soth off in its dying breath, the hideous abomination is revealed to be, in a shocking twist, Wilbur's twin brother, a more hideous, monstrous, and altogether otherworldly version of Wilbur. So there we have the story in a nutshell. Let's briefly chat about the themes and ideas in the Dunwich Horror. The themes and ideas in the Dunwich Horror are ones which preoccupied Lovecraft throughout most of his life and are vividly brought to life here. I should note that many of Lovecraft's ideas and preoccupations are not only archaic and strange to the modern ear, he was somewhat anachronistic even for his time, but can be downright offensive, especially around his ideas and thoughts around race and class. But aside from that, in no particular order, they are purity versus degeneracy. Lovecraft's novels often feature individuals and populations who lack the more refined manners, airs and graces of polite society, and instead revel in an older, darker, preoccupation and debaucheries. These are characterized as dangerous, primal or instinctual, and it's often left to fine upstanding learned gentlemen of science and letters to save us from these forces of chaos. Number two, unknowable and unfathomable knowledge. Lovecraft often presents a knowledge of the universe as something that humans cannot understand with their sanity intact. Such a deeper knowledge is only hinted at in shunned books like the Necronomicon, and cannot be read without risking serious damage to one's sense of self and assumptions about the reality of all things. Ambiguity, Lovecraft rarely presents the reader with easy certainty. His stories may end, but the threat posed by the rupture to the order of the universe is never fully mended, as long as degeneracy continues, and as long as deviant books exist, the danger of further horror is always present. What the threats are are only ever hinted at, but their impact upon humans is unmistakable. So there you have it. The story and its themes present a perfect springboard for the Dunwich legacy. Whilst Wilbur and his brother have perished, the impact on this shunned township is bound to extend into the future. Are there others in Dunwich who have been tainted? We also have a set of characters who know enough to act as allies and quest givers in the campaign, and ultimately a showdown is needed to close this chapter for good and for all. What role will we play in the larger narrative begun by Lovecraft in 1928? Only time will tell. So thank you everyone for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, comment and subscribe. And please listen to Flavor Text when you embark on your journey in the Dunwich Legacy. Kevling and I have broken down the stories in the campaign scenario by scenario and looked at how the gameplay aligns with this story. You can listen to the podcast on all platforms or here on this YouTube channel. A special thank you to Sub Zero Joe, who made some notes on the Dunwich Horror, which I find super useful in putting together this video. Thanks, Sub Zero Joe. Appreciate it. And that's all from me. I'm Krabby Terror 8. Thank you so much for listening and goodbye.